Welcome back. It's the Worlds. It's four-wheel drive qualifying round two. And once again, we're gonna have a look at heat 14 of 14, the top heat. We saw Davide Ungaro take the top spot in round one. And in this round, we've just seen Bruno Coelho put in a 16.502, which is definitely up the sharp end. In local news, Ben Smith having a quick run, about a lap down on Bruno due to a couple of problems and errors, but Ben definitely with a ton of pace here. On the back of his recent national win. All right, race number 14, he's gonna check in. 14. So big he's thanks, Schumacher, Rude Bits, and FF Racing. Schumacher, of course, the L1R. Cougar LD2, fantastic cars. I can testify to that as I am running them myself. As they take a warm up. Rubits, brass, tungsten carbide diff balls. Serpent kits, of course. And FF Racing, really the unofficial TLR representative in the UK. He is uh, Freddie Russell, of course, will supply you with anything TLR and has a great collection of historic cars as well. You might find it hard to buy them from him, but they are superb. So it's going to be Ongaro, Ongaro first away. You just see Ongaro in there. He has a coloured body shell. The plain white is gone. So now I know what he looks like. We'll be able to follow him. We'll start off by follow Derby we're going to go when I call your number two. Seven, I have to say, the track, ten, I think, has been quite consistent. Four, a little bit slower first thing this morning because eight, the misters were on all night. Nine, but three, now it's pretty consistent. One, five, I, six, it looks easy on the camera. But that corner three, under the rostrum, which is between two jumps, is extremely eight, difficult. So easy to go in either too fast or too slow. I'm going to stick with Davide until everybody has been through. And I can tell you that it's Tater Sontag that leads this at the moment. He is car number seven, which is just here behind Davide. Driving a TLR. Here he is. They, do, they make it look so easy. You know, anyone at home watching this would go, oh, I should have gone to the world. It looked easy. You know, simple. They're just, they're just, as Sontag is over, it's back on its wheels somehow. You know, it looks easy. They're just, you know, driving gently. I cannot tell you how hard this is. Traction's not too bad. It is, it is loose. And it is one of those surfaces that once you break traction, you have to like drop 50% of your speed to get it back again. But Angaro is back on top, so here he is. Of course, the Italian associated driver, long-term associated driver. There was a huge round of applause led by Craig Drescher when he took round one. And I have to say, given where we are, nearly on the west coast of America, and given the style of the track, and given how much running this track, not this particular design, but the facility has seen, I'm extremely surprised not to see an American on top. But it has to be said that if we want drivers from the UK to be competing right up at the sharp end, I'm not for a second taking anything away from Ben Smith and the Hull brothers and the Luke the, 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 the Luke brothers, the Holdsworth brothers. Not taking anything away from them, but if they don't get consistent practice on tracks like this, they're not going to be competitive on tracks like this. And I think they can hold their heads high with the performances that they've put in so far. The holes, of course, looking very quick. Just, just 
it's just a lack of familiarity, I think, that is the big problem, and the confidence that goes with that. So it's Dakota Finn now, typically. It's fine, Dakota. Here he is, over the triple. Algaro's back, but we'll stick with Dakota Fenn. Now, Dakota Fenn is making little mistakes, which are a little bit uncharacteristic for him. Um, I know after the last Worlds in Slovakia, a lot of people felt very sorry for him because it was his world to throw away, and he managed to throw it away. And I think uh, we'd like to see the injustice of that corrected for sure. 18-2 I found, you know, approximately three seconds faster than anything I can muster. Three seconds in a 20 second lap is pretty huge. And I can tell you it's all about their precision in the air and how the car lands. The car is never pitched incorrectly, there's never too much brakes, the throttle is never applied too early, and the movement of the steering in the air correcting the attitude of the car is uh, very impressive. Every single corner there are cognitive changes made to make sure the car flies right. Flies right. So it's Fend. Fend and Angaro running awfully close together. And Fend has to single, single the triple, or single, single, single the triple. So that's a problem. So. So, is that going to pass it back to Angaro? Angaro is finished on a 16.501, only slightly quicker than Bruno. So Bruno's involved, Fenn goes through. Let's see if you can read that. So Angaro, a 16.501.2, then Fenn. Now it's going to be close between Fend and Bruno. And Kero, third on a 503. So it's two from two from David and Garo. Where is he? And he be Oh, there he is. Bit of a chat with uh, the TV. Not us. Okay, look, we're not going to wait for him. I have to go and get my car ready. I'm car at heat three. That was round two. Big thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. These guys here, Live RC, have coverage and there's some other media people here so support the event click like get that finger going and we'll talk to you in round three